always in motion. This is one day at a time. Everyone has cancer, and this is where I battle mine. What's up, everyone? Hello again from the world of the cow. From I guess, yeah, from the kingdom of the cow. From the jury of whatever. Hey, welcome back to Cody's room. Um, <laughs> welcome back to Everyone Has Cancer. Uh, my name is Cody, and uh, yeah, this is episode 12 of the EHC. Uh, I've been really busy, guys. Sorry I haven't put up a new episode as of late. Uh, I just got a new job, and that's kind of taken up a whole lot of my time, and I've uh, been kind of moving and shaking and just kind of going out and uh, you know finding my place in the world. Um, I met, I got it. There's so many things I got to tell you guys about. Um, there's some really cool people that I've met, and there's this one lady in specific that I want to talk about. And uh, you know, then I'm so basically I want to I want to tell you about this lady I met. But uh, you know, first I want to got to go through the introductions. Then I'm going to tell you about this lady, and then we're going to go with our regular schedule scheduled program of uh, you know telling. Uh, my story. Last time we talked about uh, when I was first going in, or well, not first going into the hospital for cancer, but the second time around when I got shipped off to OKC and it was like right back down into into the thick of it. But this time, the, all where all the battles last time were all physical. This time it was purely, purely mental, as uh, my psyche was and cog, cog, my what what's the word for it? Cognitively, I was a lot. I was there, uh, where the last time I was messed up on morphine, and honestly, like I still, I think I said this before, I still have people that come up to me and say they came to visit me at the hospital uh, the first time around, and I just kind of have to accept that because, uh, you know, I couldn't remember it. Uh, that whole time was a blur, but the second time, I dang near remember every single day. Because uh, that and that was the time that really messed with my head. Obviously, messed with my body. You know, lost some weight, had uh, lost a lot of hair, and uh, you know, had to rebuild from scratch again. But yeah, it was it was a mental war. So we're gonna get into the mind grenade of it, or the mind f- ooh the mind filet. I think that's what I'm gonna call this episode. The I, my mind got filleted, and uh, I almost went nuts clinically. I almost went nuts. I was diagnosed with uh, cabin fever, <laughs> which I didn't even think was a real thing, but I actually got diagnosed with cabin fever. And, uh, you know, but we'll get into that. Um, so yeah, here, here's how we're going to do it. Introduction. Uh, I, I want to tell you about this lady and then we'll spend about, uh, 30 minutes today and, I'll, and we'll get into more of my story. But first I got to give those introductions. Uh, let me tell you guys, guys and girls, you are strong. Uh, what you have gone through in life, you are stronger for it. If you haven't gone through anything horrendously bad in your life, I'm telling you there's going to be something you go through. And, and it may not be like a complete, utter tragedy. I'm not telling you, oh, we're all freaking doomed. Uh, but I'm just saying there's one day you're going to face something that is going to redefine you as a person. I don't want to say define you as a person. I've, I've said that before, but I kind of want to rework that because it's going to redefine you as a person. Your whole life is going to change from something happening, and uh, when it does, it you know you'll you'll know it because it's something you'll think you're going to think about for a very long time, and you're going to wonder what would have happened to what kind of person would I be like if this didn't happen. The reason I call the show "Everyone Has Cancer" is because in 2001 I was diagnosed with leukemia. Uh, you know, got better, as we've talked about. But in 2005, which, you know, we're getting into the thick of that, once more into the Breach Dear Friends was the last episode, um, I got diagnosed again. I relapsed. Uh, and the second time, I was a little bit older, and this time I was going into... It was like going back to war, knowing exactly what war does to you. And that really messed me up. And... Uh, <clears throat> You know, for a long while, and I mean, I'm even to the point of me trying to understand it by creating a podcast all these years later. <laughs> but I had so ma- I've had so many people in my life come up to me and tell me how strong I am and how courageous I am, and you know, oh man, if it, you're such a hero, and I've heard that before, and uh, I always look, you know, that always felt a little weird because you know what. That, to me, means that heroism is defined by laying in bed, crying, and throwing up. That's what heroism is. (laughs) You know, because that's all I thought I did. But 
I was, I've been an inspiration to someone. You know, in my life, I can honestly say that I inspired someone to to know that things could be worse. Um, and I've had friends come up to me and say, "Man, I'm I'm having the worst." trouble like I got the worst bronchitis I've ever had in my life but that's nothing compared to what you went through you no know, no bronchitis and cancer are two different things but don't belittle what you go through appreciate it understand that what you went through you know where I had cancer you know someone else might have an abusive uh, significant other be it physical sexual verbal or they may abuse drugs and be in the thick of that. Or maybe addicted to something else. Or uh, they may have lost a loved one. They, they may have uh, horrible uh, suicidal thoughts. They may have thoughts of hurting themselves. Uh, all those questions that psychiatrists like to ask. Have you, ever, uh, you know, have you ever thought about hurting yourself or someone you love? Do you, do you question killing yourself or someone you love? And I, some, of the, some of us that have seen a psychiatrist might say, no, I... <laughs> I wouldn't hurt a fly, but they have to ask those questions because there are people out there that consider it, that consider that uh, drive down the highway, and this is something honest to God. You know, maybe we'll get into it later, but you know, uh, many years later, I, I I had trouble with that. I would drive down the highway considering getting really really fast and just pulling the wheel down, just pulling it as hard as I can, topple the car over, and hoping to kill myself. You know, and just just maybe someone will question it. Maybe someone will say, "I wonder what happened. I wonder what he hit. I, w- I wonder what went wrong." And may not ever know that you know, I did it purpose purposefully. Um, but you know, that kind of ruins that plan because you know now you're gonna wonder if I ever die in a car accident if I did it myself. So uh, wow, what a great way to start out the show. <laughs> um, and as my brother texts me. <laughs> um, which is kind of ironic, but we'll get about, we'll get into that much much later in life. But uh, everyone goes through a hardship. Everyone deals with inadequacy. Everyone does something throughout the day. I I, I really feel like if a person is going through every day completely confident in what they're doing, then and they're not making any mistakes, then they're not learning. You know, you got to you got to strike the dirt otherwise the plant's not going to grow, you know, and you got to you got to open wounds up so they can heal from the inside out, you know, and um and these wounds sometimes it comes down to what I went through where you ha- you face your own mortality and there's no no two ways about it. You can't run from it. You can't hide from it. If you listen to a previous episode, I had to face that the uh when I was going into uh diagnosis the second time around when I actually went AWOL when I was at the hospital I ran and I thought I went outside and left the hospital and stared down the ho- stared down the street and thought about just running and had to face the fact that there's no amount of running I can do to get away from this that I can't get away from this and that I have no choice and my options are gone my free will was gone and I had to do this or I had to, it was do this or die it was the worst ultimatum to be handed to you. And sometimes you get those ultimatums and everyone is going to have that one thing that they can talk about that helped define them as a person. Um, that's the tragedy part. You know, I, I know that starts it out as like a, a hard thing to say and like kind of a buzzkill. Here's where it's not a buzzkill. You get to decide how it defines you. That's the biggest thing. It's going to destroy you. You get to build from the ground up. Okay? You get to decide. Even though it doesn't feel like it, if you know, if you got all if you got a storm coming, you gotta let that and that storm is going to hit whether you defend yourself against it or not, or whether you attack back or fight back on it or not, it is going to strike. You get to decide how the story ends. You know, whether it's a sad story or a hopeful story, you know, because if I would have just sat there and just, you know, let cancer take me, then it would have been the sad story of, you know, all my friends, you know, maybe someone would be talking about on their 
you know, motivational podcast about a friend they had named Cody back in high school who just who got cancer and decided not to fight back. And I'm always going to be angry at him for that. Or it's they're going to turn around and say, you know, well, it, it showed me how to value life and that if that ever happens to me, I am going to fight back because that's what he should have done or something like that. It could have been a whole different story is what I'm saying. But I got to define it and I get to define me. You know, I get to define my own courage and what I get to do about it. And this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is what I've decided to do about it, is tell you guys my story and hope that it does something for you. And if it just stops you for a second, makes you go, huh, then that's good enough. I've had my sister uh, listen to the sto- listen to this podcast of a story that she's been a part of her whole life and uh, say, man, when you said this or when you said that I had to stop for a sec and pause it and think for a minute <laughs> you know and I'm not trying to change anyone I'm not uh I'm no preacher I'm you know I'm not a leader and uh or anything like that it, but if I can tweak the way you think and stop someone from thinking bad about themselves because of what they've gone through for a second then that's what I want to do so that's what this podcast is all about. It's to say, you know, that everyone has cancer. Everyone has that big thing that they're trying to get over or is needs to needs to get over, has been through or will go through that that they're going to need help with. And no, nothing is a better teacher than experience, you know? Like if uh, you've heard me say it every single episode. 12 times to be exact uh, after I say it this time, but I got a friend that uh, she deals with uh, suicidal thoughts, and I don't mean like she thinks about it and it goes that direction, because I think everyone once in a great while has kind of, you know, has or will hit rock bottom and maybe consider it, maybe not even consider it because they would never actually do it, but weigh their options against it. Even just for a millisecond, it'll get introduced in their head. But she, man, it, it, that's her storm. That's her tornado warning. You know, and to the point that she tells her husband, hey, I'm having those thoughts. And they have a whole routine. Just like if you live in Oklahoma, there's a whole routine for when there's a tornado warning. You know, if, if there's a tornado warning, you start watching the weather a little bit more. And if it's getting really nasty outside to the point where, like, you know, the old guy pops up in the suit and is like, hey, uh, batting down the hatches, it's, it's going to be a slobber knocker because <laughs> I'm a wrestling fan. It's going to be a slobber knocker because JR is your weatherman. Um, but what do you do? You know, you get the family together. If you live in a two-story house, everyone gets in the living room. Uh, if it starts hailing or getting really nasty, everyone starts putting their shoes on. Uh, if it gets even nastier, you know, you get the radio in the bathroom. You get, you know, if you got pets, you get the pets in the bathroom or, you know, or in the basement or wherever you have that's like your safety safe, your safe area. And uh, you get some blankets in there and, I mean, you really start preparing you know, and uh, that's that's what she does when she has these thoughts. She ends up, uh, her her and her husband get every kind of sharp object in the house, and lot, they have a safe that is just just for these moments. And she puts all the stuff in the safe, you know, so she can't get to it. And uh, you know, they've she's even gone down to like writing letters that people have found that you know were letters that were kind of talking about what she was going to do and her apology for doing this. Uh, Like a letter is going to make up for, you know, a piece of paper is going to make up for a piece of her being gone from their heart. But the people, but so she knows how to work with it. She knows how to do the prep. Um, So if she was to talk to someone that was just now having those kind of thoughts, just now going down that road, and they really think that it's that suicide is or suicidal thoughts and suicidal tendencies doesn't know that it, that that's a disease that that's you know it's a it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem, and they think that this is the all be all no answer to what they're going through. If she if a doctor came up. If I came up and said, hey, you know, there's, there's no I in team and someone loves you and you're valued, it's not going to mean as much as – it's not going to carry the weight that it would if she said it. You know, because you can sympathize and then you can empathize. 
you know, and I can sit there and say, I, I can't believe you're going through this and I, I wish I could do something about it. Or she could get in there and say, hey, that that trail you, you just went through in the woods that you think you just blazed through, uh, that footpath is one that I laid down. And, I, and that footpath is there through that hard situation because I've walked it several times. And they're going to ask her, well, what, what did you do? How did you get through it? Even um, I've, I've had people ask me that. I've had <laughs> uh, I, I made this joke before. I had a friend that uh, this girl that pulled me aside at a party. We were drinking and stuff. She pulled me aside and she's like, hey, so I just found out I was diagnosed with cervical cancer and I wanted to talk to you about it. And uh, I was like, OK, gosh, uh, like, oh, my God, like, well, what, what are you going to do? And she was like, well, I was going to ask, what do you think I should do? And I was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, and she was like, well, you've had cancer before. And I was like, yeah, but I don't, I didn't have cervical cancer. I mean, I don't even have cer- cervicals. So, um, so I don't, I don't, but I've had cancer, you know, so I, I was like, all right, well, hey, and I just gave her a piece of my story. I didn't know what to tell her. I, I can't tell her what to expect, you know, when her cervicals got cancer. I don't, I don't know what to do about that. All I knew to do is, Uh, say stupid stuff like that, get a laugh out of her, and then say, well, look, it's going to be hard. You know? It's it's going to be a a difficult thing you have to do. But you're going to be all the stronger for it. And don't forget that, you know, you you don't go in there alone. You know, you're going in there, and you got the diagnosis, but everyone else is doing the treatment with you. Your family goes through the treatment. Um, You know, what, what do they say when someone does the... Uh, when they talk about joining the military, is you you sign the papers and the family serves the, you know, join serves the military, or something like that. You know, like you do the time, your family serves the time. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll quit doing that. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, like uh, y- you never know who you can help or who you can be with just by telling your story. You know, it might you know rock something. It might set off some thunder in there. In someone else's belly, you know, and they might say, oh, my God, like, I'm not alone. I'm, I'm not crazy for thinking that, you know, it's, it's funny how someone thinks they're nuts until someone agrees with them. You know, like if someone said, you know, how many times have you said, have you, you know, if you've gotten into a fight with someone and thought you were completely wrong and then you talk to someone who completely agrees with you, then suddenly you don't feel wrong about it anymore. It, you could just be two people that are wrong, but, <laughs> you know, but no, you you take solace in that. It's easy to take solace in the fact that, you know, someone has been there before and they're now standing in front of you. You know, it, it gives it gives peace. It, it gives resolve. So that that's that's my resolve here. Um, as you can tell, 18 minutes in, the show isn't always going to be a happy story. You know, it, it, sometimes it's going to be sad. Sometimes it's going to get a little gross, you know. Uh, but in the end, I just, I just want everyone to know that, uh, that you are strong and that you are broken and that's okay. You know, because sometimes you got to break things to let new things grow. And, uh... You know, and you and you got to understand that you are broken and you're not perfect and that you ain't Superman. You know, um, I think a lot of people make that mistake too. Is they they think they can take on anything, and uh, then they get worried that someone's going to find out that they're that they're full of crap. You know, that someone is going to want. You know, they have that little anxiety that dude, you're going to sooner or later this person is going to realize that I am not the person I act like I am. I'm not this uh, courageous, strong person all the time. I am completely weak, and I don't know what to do about it. And there's, there's freedom in accepting your own weakness. Let me just tell you that. There's freedom in accepting the fact that you're, you can't be strong all the time. You cannot be Superman all the time. You know, even Superman's got to take a nap once in a while. Um, so, yeah. Um, man, okay, so kind of ranted a little bit, kind of went off the beaten path, but I got to tell you about this lady I met. Um, so, uh, you know, just, you got, I, I apologize for not, um, disclosing where I work. I, it's not really that big of a deal, but, um, 
but yeah, I'm, I'm a salesperson, you know. Um, I, uh, it's, it's funny how I kind of just ramble like this, but, you know, by, by night, I'm, you know, inspirational, motivational, and, uh, you know, helping people process things. But by day, uh, I'm a sales rep. And uh, so this lady comes in the store, <clears throat> and she's on crutches. And I look and I notice that uh, she's got one leg. Her right leg is completely gone. There's just that, you know, that nub. And, uh, you know, just kind of like wrapped in in a cloth. And, it, you know, it, it kind of looked like, you know, when you at, on, during Thanksgiving and when you go buy the turkey, you know, and it's all just wrapped and pink and like kind of mushy looking. Like that's what that's what her right leg looked like. Her left leg was a leg, but it was fake. You know, it was, it was obviously, it was a very fake leg. And, um, it was, or I say a very fake leg. It was just very obviously a prosthetic. I don't know how else to explain that. So she doesn't have any legs and she's on crutches. That is the first thing I, I noticed. And this is completely true. I, I, you know, I am not making this up, but, um, the first thing she comes in. And she's got this dude with her, and uh, the dude is just, uh, he, he's a little bit slow, and he's wearing a Ramon shirt. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he comes in, and he's, uh, he, he's, got, he's got a speech impediment. She speaks fine. And, you know, he holds the door open for her. First thing I think when I look at her, first thing, is why the hell is this lady not in a wheelchair? You know, she very obviously doesn't have any legs. And she's on crutches. And she is winded, guys. Like, I mean, she is, like, <sighs> like she she looks like she just hopped off the bench and just lifted a 1,000 pounds over and over. Like, she is wiped from just going from her car to the door, you know. So, uh, and in the store I work at, there, there's a couch off to the side. So I kind of, you know, she comes up and uh, asks me some questions. And all I'm thinking is, is... God, this this poor woman. Why the crap is she on crutches? <laughs> you know, why didn't why isn't she in a wheelchair? And all I could think of was that she must just be a really that that's stubbornness. Like I'd have to, she has got to be really bullheaded, and not in like a crappy way. Like I don't mean that as an insult. I mean like this woman. I could tell by looking at her has gotten as far as she's gotten in life because she's bullheaded. You know, only a bullheaded person would not have legs and wear themselves out, you know, riding crutches all the way in, <laughs> you know. And uh, so I was like, oh, my God, this and instantly was like, good Lord, this woman is strong and focused and she's got resolve that she's, you know, she is not given up. And just and I could tell all that before she even got over to me. And she gets over to me, and she's we're talking about um, stuff involving my store. And uh, as she's talking, she is obviously out of breath. And I'm and I'm so I'm just sitting here listening to her and understanding her needs and what we need to talk about, but really just kind of admiring her and just being like, "Good lord!" It was like seeing seeing someone just stand toe to toe with Mike Tyson. It's it's like watching the first Rocky movie and seeing you know Rocky get wailed on by Apollo Cruz and keep getting up, but it's just the lady on crutches. Like that that's the feeling. I was just like, I I had no words for. Her. So I just said, hey, why don't we go over to the couch and just sit and talk? You know. So we sit. And we're talking. And it was at that point that I realized that uh, her left leg was a prosthetic leg, because you know that that's when her uh, she had she had pants. But it was kind of like her right leg was kind of stitched over like her butt. Like I guess she just uh, it looked like she just all her pants must look like this, you know, like where her right leg is just the, she probably just buys pants, chops off the right pant leg, and stitches it up, and you know, and just has it there like kind of in a bag. And, uh, so yeah, we sit down, we start talking and, uh, you know, we, we, I mean, and then we really get to talking because she, um, you know, she brings up, uh, the, the guy that she was with, uh, stepped off to use the restroom and she said, you know, oh, so, sorry about him. He's a little slow. And I was like, no, that, that's fine. 
I'm, you know, I'm kind of more interested in you. You, man, you are tough. You know, and uh, we, and that kind of lights up the conversation. Um, warning. Before I go any further, this this is gonna get pretty dark. Okay. Um. So this woman, uh, I'm just okay. I'm gonna pause. This is not for the faint of heart, and I'm not trying to be a buzzkill, but this is a story I've been thinking about for a while, and I've been thinking about it since I met this woman. So, that's your warning. You know, if you want to skip this part, then skip it. You know, if you if you want to keep listening, you know, I by all means keep listening. I am not. I do not have control of you listening to me. Which I uh, kind of wish I did, because then I could get more s- subscribes and more likes, and uh, that way, uh, you know, the court of cows could maybe get. Okay, uh, you know what? Uh, I forgot to do the plugs earlier, but I'll do that later. Um, so here we go with the hard part of the story. Three, two, one. Here we go. So I a- so I end up asking her, you know, are you? diabetic or if you don't mind me asking are are, are you diabetic or um, did you get frostbite or was there an accident and uh, she, she she looked about my age you know about 30 30 something maybe a little bit older and uh, she says no um, when I was 18 I was kidnapped and the man didn't sexually assault me he tortured me and this guy strapped her to a bed and took a blowtorch to her feet just to see what it looked like um and blowtorched her feet off like burned them to the point of them just one of them just her i guess her left foot just falling off and uh her right foot uh i guess she ended up just kind of it after that it just kind of deteriorated so she would lose a toe and then lose another toe and then lose another toe up to the point of it you know losing her shin then her knee then her whole quad to the point that you know to the you know thanksgiving turkey that it looked like now just that you know that lump of skin under under her right hip um because of the kind <laughs> oof so it gets worse um, because of the type of blowtorch she used. I get, I can't remember the actual names of it, but it used a specific kind of gas. And because that gas was blown and burned onto the direct, onto direct bone, because it melted her skin off and everything, and melted the muscle, and um, it was on direct bone. It actually gave her bone cancer. So. She didn't just get diagnosed with it. A person kidnapped her, tortured her, and gave her cancer. <laughs> that, that, that is the most evil thing. I am a comic book fan, and I've read some evil stuff, you know? And I've read... I, I could give you a list of all my favorite supervillains. But that is completely and unabashed, unashamedly evil. You know, evil and nothing else. Not evil with a side of, you know, compassion, because maybe this person had a reason for doing this. This person, for no reason, tortured her, and it gave her cancer. <laughs> you know, that, good God, you know, how, and that, ugh, how do you live with that? You know, and you might be thinking, God, I wish I didn't know that story. I, I wish I didn't hear that. But here she is right in front of me on again in crutches. You know, so it was the first time, you know, how I said at the beginning of the episode that, uh, you know, someone would come up with uh, bronchitis and say, well, it's nothing. Well, oh, man, I've never felt so bad. It's nothing compared to what you went through. For the first time, I when I brought up, you know, I told her that I had leukemia. I felt like I was telling her I had bronchitis. <laughs> I felt like I was telling her I had, you know, I like she told me her uh, she lost her legs and I was and I 
followed that story up and telling her I relate because I had a hangnail once and I thought and it hurt really really bad you know or or I get athlete's foot sometimes like that's that's how I felt like I felt like what I have been through and the whole reason that I want to do this show and the whole reason for who I am be it you know broken insecure and uh, you know high you know with an anxiety disorder I felt like none of that was worth anything compared to what this lady has been through you know and it was it was the first time that and i've again been through cancer it was the first time i was angry at god you know that i actually said to myself um god better be all over this you know god oh man you know, and I'm gonna get a little Christian on you guys for a sec, but I I was sitting there thinking, when when this lady leaves, I'm gonna you know ask to use the restroom, and I'm going to go to the restroom, drop on my knees, and pray that God gets with this woman and gives her the help she needs, because the fact that this has happened to her, and the fact that I'm finding out about this, and that maybe he doesn't know, that that angers me, and <clears throat> excuse me. But that angers me to a point that I cannot believe in, you know, I was telling myself, God, I cannot believe in you anymore if you aren't going to be there for this woman. You know, and it was it was then in the story that, you know, she ended up saying, uh, <clears throat> you know, she told me all that. And then she said, you know, I, I told him we were just going to have to go toe by toe. Because, you know, I, I'm going to hang on to my legs as long as I can. And, uh, you know, and she did. And then when it got down to uh, wheelchair or crutches, she doesn't want someone pushing her around, you know, because she can get around herself. And then hits me with this and says, because God got a hold of me and told me that I don't need legs to move forward. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I'm sitting here angry at God because, you know, he hasn't moved her and, you know, and that this woman is having to deal deal with this all by herself. And then she actually opens up her heart and tells me that God has been there for her and that she's a firm believer and that she believes in the good things and believes in love. Like, you know, I said this about the kids, you know, um... First time I got diagnosed, you know, I, I you know was treated in the pediatric area, and I would sit there in the pediatric area because there was like a little play area, and I, and I would sit in there and like you know watch the other kids play, and it was like being on a playground where everyone's bald, you know, and all these kids are sitting there playing, laughing, having having a good time, you know. Sometimes the nurses would come out and like paint kitty cat whiskers on their faces or something, and um. And then, you know, they'd play for a little while, and then one of them would get too tired and have to go to their room, or one of them would have to go take some more methotrexate, some more chemotherapy, you know, and uh, have to go throw up for a while, you know. And But they were sitting here just for a minute, and they were smiling and laughing and actually hadn't had the nerve to laugh at a time like this, at a time that they were at death's door. That at any moment, right now, if they did nothing, they would die this week, <laughs> you know? Or they would at least die within the month, you know? Have you ever had a situation where, you know, if you just stop trying for a month that you would die? Not you might die, you would be dead? Well, that's what these kids were doing, you know? That if they didn't go in this other room and they just stopped trying altogether, they would be dead within a month. And we're sitting there laughing, <laughs> you know? We're sitting there laughing and cutting up and hamming it up and having a blast, you know? And that's, that's the stuff that got, got me through it. And that talking to this lady, and she's actually telling me that after this horror she has faced, not a movie monster, not the Joker, you know? Not Two-Face, not the Riddler, uh... She's not facing Lex Luthor. You know, she's not fa- facing an alien horde that only Will Smith can bring down. She's facing a real world monster that gave her the big C, the one that everyone's afraid of, that I'm all too familiar with, but gave it to her. 
imprisoned it in her body, put it in her body, and she still believed in love and happiness and joy and hope and moving forward. If that doesn't inspire you, I don't know what will. This lady with no legs has found the will to move on. (laughs) And she is moving on and moving forward. And is still, you know, tearing... She was tearing up when she's telling when she told me, and you know now I'm now I'm tearing up just telling you, but <clears throat> and trying to get a hold of myself. Okay, Whew. that that's the stuff I live for. That's the that's the fruit of life, guys. Uh, my warriors. That's what that's what you can be to someone. You know, you can go through something so bad in your life. And if you do, and if you come out, and you don't have to say these great words, you don't have to say "follow your dreams," you know, you don't have to do anything but smile, smile in the face, and dance in the face of certain doom, and you win. You win because you, you know, you can do it just to spite them, just to spite the evil that was done to you. Uh, I live every day because at one point. I was told I may not make it through the month. Um, but I live every day just kind of to laugh in the face of that. Um, when you hear, you know, if, if someone ever hears that they only have eight months to live, that's more than enough reason to keep moving on just just to prove it wrong, just, just for pride. Um, so, yeah, I, I just wanted to tell you about that lady. Um her name was Anna, and she and she was amazing. And uh, you know, she's not the first warrior that I've I've met. Um, I, I met a, I met a few more warriors while I was going through that. Um, maybe one day, I, you know, I'll tell tell you the story of you know some some of the kids that I met that you know some of them didn't make it. You know, and uh, you know, and that gave me a lot of survivor's guilt, as they call it, for a long time. But you know that that's a sad story and, and a bum out story for another day. <laughs> um, so like that that's that's the story I have for that so far. But you know, right now, I want you to just think about that. You know, I want you to think about that this woman that came in on crutches and had this horrible evil done to her and this horrible wrong, this horrible tragedy that was done to her. She didn't stumble upon it. It didn't just happen one day. That it was done to her. Someone willed it into existence. And she's lived with it ever since. And she and she still believes in hope and love. Yeah. So why can't you? I guess is the question here. You just move forward. Move forward for the sake of moving forward. Move forward because you don't feel like you should. You know, whenever you feel like you don't deserve greatness, then move towards greatness. You know, when you think all, all hope is gone, then make hope. Make it yourself. You know, be your own foundation. You know, work towards love and happiness. Not for a selfish reason, but just... Nothing is stopping you from being at the gas station, at the fountain drinks, you know, filling up your, you know, Dr. Pepper or filling up your coffee for the morning, looking over to the person that's doing it next to you and saying, hey, giving them a thumbs up and saying, you're doing great. And never say another freaking word to them, not knowing them from Adam. And they could look at you like, "Uh, yes, I'm very good at pouring coffee. What? Because you might end up getting that one person that really needed to hear that that day. And uh, nothing is stopping you from, you know, enjoying your day but you. You're the only one stopping yourself. And uh, don't hold back. You know, take value in everything you do. You know, because you're doing it. You know, you, you are someone's baby and you are someone that's worth having around. And you are, you know, a good addition to this world. You're a positive addition to this world. And I love you. You know, I don't care who you are. I love you. And, uh, you know, just just move forward, Even you know, and if you don't feel like you should, that's all the more reason to do so. 
just just to spite the fact. And that's the goth kid coming out in me that says, you know, like, hey, if I'm supposed to be this way, then I'm not going to conform to that because, you know, someone else thinks I should. <clears throat> Even if that someone else is myself. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Um, dang, I kind of went on a while on that. So, uh, I mean, I don't really have a whole lot of time. Well, you know what? That, that's the story I want to tell you today. And, uh, you know, I, I was planning on telling you that story with her and then telling you a little bit more about that story. But this this will be the, you know, this will be the, the story of today. And we'll get more into me next time. Um, so, again, sorry, sorry for, uh, you know, being absent for a little bit there some major things have happened in my life you know and um uh you know just like i said just got a new job which you know i'm pretty dang successful at that it, that's going great i'm actually getting out of debt which is great um and i'm finally to a foundation where i can take care of myself you know and that's i've needed that for a really long time that that's a hard thing to achieve but but i'm i'm finally getting there it's lonely you know, I can tell you that much. Um, uh, kind of ever since the hospital stuff, ever, kind of everything I do that is kind of something I have to do on my own, I feel like I'm getting left out of everything else. And this, this is, these are just the problems I have. It's just abandonment issues. Or, you know, I started thinking that life, you know, realizing that life goes on without me. You know, kind of came to that realization a long time ago that whether I'm a part of it or not, life goes on for everyone else. You know, the world doesn't stop for me. And, uh, you know, I just hope that, you know, all my, you know, you can only hope that all your friends are still around, you know, once you go through what you're going through. And if they're not, you just kind of have to reintroduce yourself in, into the pack and uh, and just kind of get there, you know, and it, and it can be kind of difficult. Right now, I'm uh, really focused on getting myself out of debt and, you know, and working and working and I'm working a lot these days. And, uh you know, when I just want to hang out with, you know, the court of cows and, you know, and just cut it up and, you know, have a blast. But, you know, we, everyone's got jobs and stuff. And it's, you know, so, yeah, I, can, I mean, when you kind of fight for one thing, it can get a little lonely. You know, so I, I you know, like just today, I, I felt, you know, a little bummed and kind of by myself and all that stuff. And, you know, tried to think of something to do or someone to hang out with and uh you know i decided i would hang out with you guys so i figured i'd you know uh cut another episode since i haven't in a while and uh you know that so that's what we're doing um you know but uh i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep fighting and i'm gonna keep moving forward and uh you know there's there's no reason for me to stop um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with me working on myself. And if someone said there's a problem with it and won't give me that recognition, then um, it's okay to be selfish sometimes. Um, because, you know, if, you, if you're not working on yourself, then no one else is. You shouldn't uh, wait for someone else to tell you that something is wrong or that you need to fix something. And, uh, you know, and don't be afraid of being by yourself and working on that. Um but yeah, like I, I just had to tell you about that lady, and uh, you know, so uh, oh, you might have noticed that uh, we haven't really been able to do anything on the quarter cows uh, in a while. Um, I've been, you know, I've I've been working on new stuff for the quarter cows, but again, new job, so uh, you know, it's kind of it's kind of taking longer than it should. Uh, I just started writing the script for another as played by me which is uh, for Mega Man 2. I'm working on the script for Mega Man 2 right now. And, uh, you know, if you, if you haven't seen the first one, uh, I implore you to go see it. You can find us. Uh, go to facebook.com slash court of cows, and uh, you can find our YouTube information through there. Uh, I only say that because it's kind of hard to find. If you go, I believe if you go to YouTube and just search court of cows, you'll be able to find our channel. Um, but the problem is, is we only have like 31 subscribers. Uh, one of which is this guy that I recently met, uh, just through online because I just loved his, uh, loved his music. 
And he does, uh, there's this guy that did a bunch of, let me see if I can find it and stall by talking, but (laughs) there's this guy that does, uh, that I was looking, for some reason I got into a kick where I wanted to look up the Max. I don't know if you know about the Max, but it's a comic book series. It was, it was a cartoon on, uh, on MTV, on MTV oddities, uh, a few, like quite a few years back. But, uh, the Max was, uh, it was about this. Uh, this guy that lived in uh, he, he was a homeless man that met this girl named Julie and uh, he had he lived in his own imaginary world his name you know he was he and he called himself the max and he lived but he lived in his own imaginary world uh, and he called it the outback or Pangea you know which is basically like this African safari setting and Julie he made her like the, the queen of Pangea or something like that. Like, I could be messing that up completely. But uh, fought Mr. Gone. And, uh, you know, and, oh, was it the Is, I think, is, like, Mr. Gone's henchman. And, but, yeah, he's basically, uh, he slips in and out of reality and kind of slips back into the outback and his imaginary world. And, and but, yeah, it really has to do with, um, it has a lot to do with, uh getting over tragedy i think that's probably why i like it but it's getting over tragedy because you know mr like she was uh julie was uh raped a while back and um and she's just kind of trying to live with the fact that it happened um there's this other girl that ends up getting introduced that turns out to be the daughter of mr gone and um, and Mr. Gone is like a serial killer and a rapist in, in real life. And every time he like kills or hurts someone, he calls Julie to tell her about it. And, uh, you know, the Max is supposed to like defend her and stuff. It, it's this crazy story that is like deals with reality and imagination at the same time. And, you know, there's this whole thing about, a, you know, a spirit animal and like how Max is secretly a bunny underneath the suit. And it, but yeah, um, but I I freaking loved it, and I just wanted to tell you about it real quick. But he uh, I I looked it up one night just to see if anyone uh, had explained they had like done any trailers or done any uh, shows about the Max and just like explaining it. And I ended up finding this one guy. Oh, is this it? Let me see here. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, his, uh, his name is Kaoru Nagisa. It's K-A-O-R-U-N-E-G-I-S-A. I'll put a link on, on this channel. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I watched this video. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, the first thing I noticed is that his theme song, which I guess is a common, uh, thing that people would say on his channel was that uh the his theme song just kind of it goes on pretty long and uh i love it <laughs> like it's just so cool to hear this whole song and i understand it going a long time because the song that you might have heard you probably heard it just now when i was playing it but you know it's this song called find myself and uh you know i ended up talking to him his it was his buddy that recorded the music, and his name is J.P. Corwin. And uh, his music is, like, done independently. I, I believe he's on Spotify. and uh, But it's really, really good. Like, really, the lyrics, the lyrical content is just incredible. I, I just want to, you know, take a minute to tell you to go check both those guys out. I'll, again, I'll put a link on this video for both of them. Um, really, really good stuff. And uh, always, you know, as always, go to Court of Cows and uh, check out some of our videos. We got some new unboxings. We just got a whole bunch of other Pokemon stuff that we're going to do uh, some openings for, like uh, some, uh, you know, toy openings and box openings and stuff like that, and give away some uh, digital codes for Pokemon and maybe even give away some of the Pokemon cards. Uh, we, you know, we got some new podcasts and new content. We always got something else brewing. And uh, I know August specifically is uh he he's got one video coming out but that's all i can really say about it right now because he's really excited about it and i'm really excited about it and i can't wait to see uh what it ends up being and like i said i you know we're i'm always going to be here for you with everyone has cancer and uh you know i'm going to try and get better about uh posting these and try to make it like a you know at least 
twice a month type thing. And, uh, you know, and, and again, working on the script for As Played by Cody, which is going to go through the Mega Man games. And if that, you know, w- that's going to be way down the road. But, you know, if, the, if that goes swimmingly, then, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, maybe I'll move on to something like Final Fantasy or, you know, something like that. Which would be really hard because right now, you know, I just did the first episode of Everyone Has, or not of Everyone Has Cancer, but as played by me. And uh, I ended up doing multiple voices. So, and I think the next one I'm going to have one other voice I'm going to be doing. So, uh, maybe build up my repertoire and be a voice actor one day. Wouldn't that be awesome? By the age of 40. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Late to the game, but, you know, hey, uh, it's not the. Dirt, uh, whatever. It's not the destination, it's the journey, whatever. Uh, whatever that phrase is. So, yeah, so this last little bit, you've just heard me, you know, heard a little red-headed pudgy guy kind of ramble. And, uh, you know, tell you about this lady and uh, tell you that you should check out the Court of Cal stuff. And uh, hit us with a subscribe, hit us with a like, because uh, we need to get more than 30 subscriptions. We need to get it up to 100. That way we can have our own URL, because, you know, once you get to a certain amount of uh, subscriptions, you we can actually be youtube.com slash Court but not until then. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to get out some more content, because there's a, and there's a lot of comic book stuff to be had, because, oh my gosh, there's so many good things that have come out of uh, Doomsday Clock, and uh, out of the Spider-Verse, and Venom-Verse, and just all the other verses, and a um, bunch of, bunch of good stuff to be talked about. A whole bunch of games. We still need to do an E3 episode of our podcast, because we always do an E3 episode, uh, and this E3 was pretty dang good if i do say so myself um get a tales of vesperia definitive edition oh my god (laughs) but yeah guys uh you know that that's what i got so far and you know that that's what i wanted to tell you about tonight uh i hope going forward you guys uh you know keep your head up and uh you know i i say this uh i kind of ramble through this every single time and i'm gonna ramble through it tonight And say that, you know, if everyone that felt broken or everyone that felt insecure, hurt, or uh, not enough or lacking or anything like that, if you felt like that and shot off a firework and I told you to fire off this firework at a specific time at night and I went around the city and did that, the city would look like the 4th of July. Here's the thing. On the 4th of July, you know, wow, I completely messed that up. Let me try that again. Here's the thing. Fourth of July is right around the corner. It is this Wednesday, guys. So, um, you know what? When you look up at that sky and you see those fireworks go off, wherever you are, you know, I want you to find a good spot to see the horizon and think that every single firework up there is someone feeling hurt or someone feeling broken and let it light up the sky Let it light up your life and let it take you, if only for a minute, and let you realize how beautiful they are. Because that's kind of how I saw that lady on the crutches, is she shot up into the air for me and she lit up and made me think and look and say, wow, that was really cool. And the price she paid for that was too expensive. But man, look how it turned out. So get outside, be hot and sticky. Uh, you know, have a couple beers on me if you're the drinking type. Uh, don't go too overboard. <laughs> Eat yourself some barbecue, have yourself some laughs, and uh, really just enjoy your time. And uh, don't forget that, you know, you are strong, you are worth having around, and that you are valued by someone. And thank you for being you. Thank you for being with me. And this is my story so far of my battles and my wars. I hope my story helps you. Now go help someone with you.